Hello and welcome to News Click. Almost everyone accepts that the peace process in Nepal is at a crucial if not decisive phase and so is the constitution writing process in that country. And right at this time we have the Nepal Prime Minister Dr. Baburam Bhattarai visiting India and everyone expects that this visit is also key to the conclusion of the peace process in that country. We have with us here Mr. Sham Shrestha, a prominent civil society activist and a prominent left intellectual based in Nepal and with whom we shall discuss these issues right now. Welcome to News Click. Mr. Thank you very much. The bon homie with which uh, Dr. Butterai was received in India, uh, although no, no major agreements were signed uh, except investment uh, uh, proposal agreements and uh, a soft line credit uh, treaty which is already there in the past. Baburam Butterai seems to be, uh, seems to have been welcomed uh, far more uh, uh, you know, graciously and uh, uh, in open arms uh, and warmly uh, than, than has been the case in the past for other uh, uh, Nepali leaders. So, uh, do you think that uh, this signifies uh, a major shift in the Indian stance towards the Maoists per se, their, their uh, uh, traditional distrust has, has uh, melted to a great extent? You know, Indian government was always positive to Babaram Batrai, uh, before also and now also. And uh, the government of Babaram Batrai was possible uh, when uh, Indian government uh, gave some green signal and some Madheshi party joined the alliance of Babaram Batrai. Therefore, uh, since then it was positive. It is not the um, happening of, uh, recent, uh, of the recent, uh, 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 recent time. Uh, therefore, in my view, uh, the attitude of the uh, Indian government seems to be somewhat soft, softer uh, than before and that softness has uh, contributed uh, some, in some way. Uh, the recent ambassador of uh, India to Nepal is also not so much intervening uh, as the previous one. That has also made some difference. Not only the attitude, but the change of the person also made some difference. Uh, the former ambassador uh, used to act like uh, some kind of, uh, you know, chief minister um, of his state. But uh, this ambassador is not doing that. Yeah. He, do, he intervenes, but he doesn't intervene as before. So this has also made some difference. But uh, as I am following the discourse in the Indian press, uh, you know, the Indian intelligentsia and Indian ruling class both are, uh, you know, somewhat more positive to the, uh, Mao, uh, to the government led by Maoists than before. At the time of Prasanda, it was not so much positive. It was positive when Madhav Kumar Nepal was there, but uh, uh, that was a different thing. So uh, I think that, you know, this government was possible because of the Indian positiveness. And after this government's coming to the power, uh, you know, Indian uh, attitude somewhat changed. But uh, still, uh, there is uh, two pronged policy towards the Bhavram Bhattraito. On one side, there is positiveness. On the other side, there is some restraint also, not to join other parties in the government, to pressurize uh, Bhavram Bhattraito government to succumb more in the RB integration process. So, this two pronged uh, approach is there, but taken as a whole, yeah. Uh, there are positive. Uh, uh, yeah, it is there. more positive. Right. Now, uh, you mentioned that the uh, Indian establishment views uh, Babaram Bhattarai but, but more favor favorably as compared to the other Maoist leaders. Uh, incidentally, within the Maoist party also, uh, there, there is a full blown two line struggle going on now. And uh, detract, detractors of Baburam Bhattarai and Chairman Prachand, who are seem to be in, uh, now, who's now seem to be in the same camp, seem to argue that uh, 
the current government has uh, you know betrayed uh, nationalistic interests in that sense and uh, a full blown campaign is now being launched by uh, sections of the um, uh, mohan bhai the kiran led camp uh, where do you think this this fissures within the maoists are uh, leading towards is it going to uh, is it going to jeopardize the peace process uh, is it going to jeopardize the unity of the party itself and how, how much uh, Uh, credence would you give to the criticisms that uh, Babaram Bhattar is receiving from these people? You know, uh, the factor of uh, Mohan Bhattar Kiran is uh, telling that, you know, Babaram Bhattar is pro-Indian, pro-Indian establishment. They say that is their claim and they are criticizing from that perspective about Babaram Bhattar government. Uh, but uh, ba- the, seeing the writings of Babaram Bhattar, seeing his past uh, you know he can he cannot be a um, uh, you know a lackey of indian uh, establishment he had some softer attitude to the indian establishment he does not speak uh, you know very vocally against the indian establishment. that is true and uh, some of his uh, thinking about indian establishment may, may be uh, maybe criticized also yeah uh, a critical also be, because he says that there is no contradiction with indian establishment now we are our, our chief establishment uh, chief contradiction is with uh, internal uh, you know uh, uh, yeah 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 that that is his thinking but uh, th- these are other things um, in my view uh, main thing is that uh, babram batrai uh, you know is being criticized by the dex faction moon by the kiran on the question of seeing the revolution of nepal you know the perspective of seeing the revolution in nepal is different quite different uh, between babram batrai and moon by the kiran between prasanda and moon by the kiran what they have accomplished in nepal is also a kind of bourgeois democratic revolution yeah the revolution of 2006 was a revolution but that that revolution was not a traditional kind of uh, you know revolution as done in china as done in russia it's a different kind of uh, revolution uh, at the ideological leadership of the communist but the, with the alliance with the bourgeoisie too yeah so this guy this is a kind of revolution and this revolution has to be completed by writing a new uh, constitution with the new progressive elements and by complete completing the army integration process by completing the other peace, pro- peace processes uh, this is the thinking of babram batrai and prasanda so Uh, so writing the constitution for them is completing the revolution yeah but for mohan bhai the kiran you know uh, since they have come to the peace process they have come to a quagmire you know a, a parliamentary quagmire and it, it has been very much difficult to get out of this quagmire therefore they don't want to complete the revolution they want another in, uh, you know revolutionary insurrection in nepal Uh, and uh, therefore they have questioned that uh, the revolution has gone astray yeah and uh, they are seeing the revolution as a type of chinese revolution that is not going to happen in nepal therefore they are very much dissatisfied uh, peace process uh, you know if it is to be completed th- their thinking is that this army integration should be done in a respectable way on that point also they have difference yeah and they have difference on organizational part also they said that you know too much power has been centered in the hands of prasanda and uh, there is uh, you know a kind of individualism there so some questions that they raise may have uh, may, may have some reasons also such as the cultural process in the party has been corrupt Th- that is a very true uh, you know criticism but on the question of revolution i think these people 
uh, Mohan Bhante Kiran had some dogmatic thinking, a, a kind of mechanical thinking, copying the model of China or copying the model of Russia will not happen in Nepal. In every country, socialist revolution or bourgeois democratic revolution happens in, in its own way, right. a, in a unique way. Right. And they also seem to underestimate the importance of having importance a, of, of a constitution. Uh, you know, they, you know, actually, the you know, uh, proclamation of the republic in Nepal, that was a very, very historical event. Uh, you know, Nepal's monarchy was 2,000 years old. Ending that monarchy was a, you know, epoch-making event in Nepal. And that was possible because of the agenda of the Maoist. Yeah. And this uh, proclamation of the, you know, federal structure is also a very, very historical event. Nepal become, becoming a secular state uh, also a very big event. You know, in India, some 9% of the parliamentarians are women. In Nepal, it is 33%. Yeah? Just double than U United States of America. So men and women are equal in many sense in Nepal. That is far progressive than India. Yeah? So inclusiveness of the constant assembly is also exemplary in Nepal. So all these achievements are not achievements for Mohan Bhante Kiran. They have done a big change in the, poli in the polity of Nepal. Only the remaining thing is a socio-economic transformation that, is, that has to be completed. But seeing politically, the uh, change in Nepal is historical in every sense. And this change has not been realized by this faction. That's the, that's the problem. This ideological uh, differences between these two factions, uh, do you think they can be contained within, within, the, within the structure of the party or uh, it has the possibility of an implosion? You know, this depends upon uh, the three things. Uh, one thing is that uh, in the coming Central Committee, how they will discuss the thing, how they will settle the disputes, that, that will depend on that. If the other faction, if the, you know, the faction of Prasanda and Babu Ram becomes uh, democratic enough to give them enough room to have inner party discussion and stop the outer party discussion and to, to conduct the discussion in a democratic way. If that is possible, then some room will be available, some space will be available for them for launching the discussion until the next, next party congress. That, that will depend on that one. Next is, if army integration is done in a respectable way, uh, then they, they will have less room to make a rumor that uh, the things had gone astray. And there will be less possibility of a party being split. Yeah. So the, the, the modality of army integration will be very, very important on that question. Third is uh, the attitude of Mohan Bhante Kiran himself. Mohan Bhante Kiran is not in favor of party being split, party split. But some leaders of his faction are, like C.P. Gazurel. Commander C.P. Gazurel is vehemently, uh, you know, trying hard, striving hard for uh, the split. But uh, Mohan Bedi is not. So, so long as Mohan Bedi is in command of the uh, faction, the party will not split and party will be united. Because he has some kind of responsibility, some kind of sense. But if uh, the faction within the faction... So, uh, finally, normatively speaking, you think that if, if, the, if the CPN Maoist avoids a split, and continues this, uh, you know, momentum that it has generated now for the completion of the peace process, at least some of the key issues in the peace process, and also uh, pushes the uh, constitution writing process uh, into the right path, then uh, what 
progressives like you and left intelligence want that direction would be ultimately reached that's what you're trying to say you know uh, if the consensus writing is uh, you know uh, writing will be successful and if the army integration also will be successful and if this uh, socio economic transformation and uh, transformation of the strategic structure right. also will be possible then all things in combined nepal will um, go to a very very big change so major leap uh, a major leap forward will be there if army integration will be there and consensus writing will be there but no socio economic transformation and no restructuring of the state if this is set with the structure and power structure in the state will be the same controlled by the elite class uh, elite car, class in Kathmandu and uh, no change no economic change in the feudal feudal structure of the economy and same semi feudal and semi colonial structure of the economy and then what happened that that at uh, the top world only will be changed you know only the super structure will be changed and the major thing will be intact now uh, the risk is that you know uh, uh, mouse leadership is trying to adjust in the uh, you know existing power structure power structure is, has not changed in nepal it is same at the hand of some feudals some bourgeoisie big bourgeoisie some competitor bourgeoisie and some some kind of higher middle class the same is ruling nepal yeah it has not changed so the working class the intelligentsia lower middle class they are they are suffering the same fate in the present context uh, present context too therefore if this is not settled then maoist army will be integrated next revolt next revolution will take in nepal yeah so if this is a change but it is the beginning of the change first change in the politics then change in the economy then change in the strata structure and change in the culture also so if this comes in this way then uh, the change will be tremendous so in which way maoists will go it is not certain now the the way it is going now it is going an erroneous way also i want to point out here that you know erroneous on the sense that state structure uh, is in, uh, intact the former state structure is intact power structure is intact the class structure of the society is intact and they are trying to make agreement after agreement compromise after compromise on these questions they are going to adjust in the uh, you know ready made st structure uh, and not going to change that if that becomes successful then what happens republic will, will come in nepal but the masters of the country will the same class yeah and the feudalism uh, the remnants of feudalism will be there control of the nepali economy by the foreign big capitalists will be intact you know, what what will happen so on these questions there should be a very very clear cut discussion clear cut line and on this question what will maoist leadership do will determine the future of nepali revolution so uh, complete change you know regime change class regime changes or another revolution there is no alternative in nepal